Hey everyone, we're the Herndons, this is Allison and I'm Brad and we know that all of our lives look really different right now than they did a couple months ago. From the way that we work, to the way that we do school, our weekly routines, it all looks different and church looks very different too. All of these things uh, have experienced a lot of changes and we really miss being able to gather with one another at our campuses for worship the way that we used to. But we're also really thankful that in this season, we have an opportunity to experience God a little bit differently by becoming the church at home. But this is all really, really new, and it happened really, really fast. So we're in this with you together. Our family is trying to figure this out too, just like many of your families are. And in our family, we have four kids and a dog, and figuring out church at home has certainly had its challenges. <laughs> yeah, maybe your household looks a little bit like ours with young kids. Maybe it doesn't, it probably doesn't. But no matter what your household looks like, what we're learning is the key to have a meaningful church at home experience is to be intentional. And so we wanted to share with you you just three ways that no matter what your household looks like, uh, you can be intentional and become the church at home. And the first step is simply this, set a time. Yeah, our first couple weeks of church at home, we just kind of rolled out of bed, got on our devices and watched the service. And although that was fun, we quickly learned we needed a little bit more structure for our family. Yep. One way we do that is on Saturday evenings, we really set the tone, we set the expectations for what Sunday morning is going to look like. And then on Sunday mornings, we try to adhere to some of our usual Sunday morning routines. Uh, in particular, we actually put real clothes on. Yeah, putting clothes on, getting out of our pajamas. Um, we, uh, you know, we we go through a lot of our old Sunday morning routine. Everything except for that part where we're always yelling at the kids to get out the door and in the car because we're going to be late for church. Which is my least favorite part, anyway. So we're okay. So this is awesome that we don't have to do that anymore. But setting the time um, and setting that out, getting that out there for everyone to know about ahead of time. And the second thing that we do, not only setting the time but set it up. So for us, we set up coffee, because that's kind of an essential part so of any essential. Sunday morning. Yes, uh, yes. We set ourselves up. We gather right here in the living room before the service starts. And we also set up the video on the TV. Uh, that way, we're not spread out on all of our different devices. It pulls us to get together. And with apps and smart TVs, we were surprised how easy it was to put the service on the TV. And that helps us experience it together. And it also helps us feel like we're more connected with what's going on in the service than we are if we're spread out on our phones. And once we set it up, we realized the component we couldn't really control was our kids, that there was a lot of activity and a lot of chaos. And yeah, those first couple weeks were interesting. They were rough, they were <laughs> rough. Um, and many of you have expressed that it's hard to kind of corral the kids during this time. Yeah, is it okay that they're jumping up and down on the couch or playing with their toys or making a lot of noise? Uh, and so that's why for us, the third step has been so important, set the tone. So one of the ways that we help do that with our family is that before the service even starts, we just take a moment and we pray. And we just kind of have a moment together of quiet and we ask God very simply to remind us that He's with us in this time. And we also ask Him to remind us uh, that this, this, this living room is His sanctuary and to make it His sanctuary. And what that helps us do is it really helps this feel different than just watching a movie together. Mm -hmm. um, we've heard from some of you that you actually go on a run or a walk around your neighborhood before you come back into your house for a time of worship and that really helps you mentally shift gears. And then once the service starts, we actually sing along with the with the worship teams and that was a little weird and different at first, but our daughter really encouraged us to do that. And as we've done it, it helps us remember that we aren't watching church, we are the church. And so some of you still may be wondering, what do we do with all our kids? How do we keep them engaged? And Pastor Dale has done a great job uh, providing opportunities or different activities that young people can engage in when he is teaching to our congregation. Another thing we do is we have a collection of kind of quiet toys and drawing materials that we let our younger kids interact with. As long as we're all together, that's what we found was the most important element. Yeah, that's what has worked for us. And then after the service is over, uh, we take a few minutes and we just have a little discussion as a family. We talk about maybe one of the verses or a point from the sermon that stood out to us and have everyone share a little something. And we talk about a way that we can live it out as a family 
in the week ahead. And that's been a really meaningful time for our family that we haven't done before. And then speaking of those kids, uh, lately our kids teams have uh, begun uploading, creating a weekly video of teaching and some music that they can watch that's just for them, that's available on the Church at Home website. But Church at Home isn't just a Sunday morning thing. Uh, we really want it to be an every day of the week thing, that we live this out all week long, which is why the Church at Home website is full of resources and teaching and discussion questions and serving ideas that can really inspire your family to be the church all week long. Right, and Wednesday nights is always a really important night for our family. We have students involved in WOW, student ministries, and then we have our own life group. Yeah. So utilizing those church at home materials, materials has really kept us engaged uh, throughout the week. Yeah, so to, to sum it up, um, be intentional. Uh, set a time, set it up, and set the tone for really becoming the church in your own household and figure out what this looks like for you. We just shared a few of ideas uh, that we're working through, that we're trying out, and what we've found is that as we're doing this, we're really able to grow closer to one another and to be able to grow closer to God and to do so in some new ways. But we know this isn't easy, so if we can help you, you can email any of our pastors at info at wooddale.org, and we can help come alongside you with some ideas and advice. And we also wanna hear some stories of what Church at Home is looking like for you along the way, because we can't wait to hear and to see how God is teaching us to be the church at home in this season. We're still having fun. Oh, we got it. Recording? Hey everyone, we're the Herndons. <laughs> I'm Brad and I'm yeah, I'm Brad and this is my wife Allison. Time. And then um uh, Ha <laughs> ha